You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. My name is Dr. Charlotte Huntley, and I will be your host on this episode, on all the episodes of this podcast. On this podcast, we explore topics of interest at the intersection of public health and entrepreneurship, and I share a lot of insights, tips, guidance, all the things that are helping you move closer to developing and growing the business of your dreams. I'm a public health entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in public health and healthcare, and I've supported a lot of entrepreneurs along the way. Now, this topic today is a special interest for all public health entrepreneurs, whether you're just getting started or you've been doing this for several years. And it's around the topic of the elevator pitch, developing your elevator pitch which I used to try to avoid and think, I don't know, does that really matter? I'm going to tell you, (laughs) it really does matter. Essentially, what it means is it's a shortened version of how you can introduce yourself in your business when you're in a situation where you only have maybe a minute, give or take, to introduce yourself and generate some interest on the other end of someone who you don't know if they could be your next client or just a member of your community or just a a friend, someone who's interested in learning a little bit more, or maybe they will have no interest beyond your introduction and what you do. At that point of the introduction, you really don't know what direction it could possibly go in, which can make it a little extra stressful, I think, in some cases. So I've made it my own mission to gamify this in a way to reduce the stress and just have fun with it. There are always going to be opportunities for you to introduce your business. So the more comfortable you are with this part of the process, the better off you will be. And I think you'll be able to start to just kind of enjoy the process and see which introductions lead to more conversation and maybe even work and clients, or maybe they get closed off. Right. So I want to share a few tips in this episode to kind of help you with developing your elevator pitch. Now I will show you, share a story with you. I have an office here in my town. I'm in, in near Columbia, South Carolina. So I do have a home office, which is where I'm doing this recording, but I have an office in downtown Columbia as well. So I haven't, there's garage parking that's under the building. So in the lower levels. And I remember parking and getting in the elevator to go up to my floor, which was about three stories up from where I parked. And someone got on the elevator right behind me. And I had a lot of stuff in my hands. I remember carrying, I don't know what all I had, but I generally travel with a backpack that has like my laptop and office stuff. But I had boxes, something in my hands. And I remember like holding all this stuff and I was preoccupied with getting to my office, putting it away. And the woman that kind of jumped on the elevator after me asked me to push her floor button. And then she started a conversation, just greetings. But then she said something and we exchanged a little bit back and forth. And then she goes, so what do you do? Because it's the first time we had seen each other in, in this building. And when she asked that question, I literally, again, from where I parked to my office was only about three floors and we had already been traveling on the elevator. So I really had a few seconds to respond to her. And I was clearly distracted by whatever I was trying to carry into the office. And I managed to like stumble through whatever and got something out that sounded interesting enough because I did bump into her a little bit later in our break room. And she had been thinking about what I said and she continued the conversation. So in that moment, all I could think of is like, dang it, I don't even have a card that I can get to and hand to her, nothing to like, I can't get to my phone and share information. So it just, I I kind of chuckled along with it, but it also put me on a mission to really perfect. I won't say perfect. That's bad because I don't think we, there's a perfection level here, but just improve my elevator pitch. I wanted to make sure that I made it really easy to communicate no matter what the situation was. My goal was to be able to communicate to someone who was interested a little bit more about what I do in a way that could be a little thought provoking and make and, and generate interest in the right person. I brought that back to my group of business friends and they're not in my niche of public health which is actually a benefit because we practiced a little bit with the elevator pitch and back and forth. And they helped me to really refine some things and remove some words in the language that I thought had been simplified, but they actually said, well, you know, we understand this only because we've been around you enough. We've heard you talk about it. But if I didn't know you and I would have questions about some of the frame, the words I was using and as I introduced myself. So that whole story (laughs) 
is just to kind of put into context how important it is because you don't really know where your next client is coming from. Not only that, when you meet someone and you get to know them, they may genuinely like you and be interested, but not be your client, but they will be an evangelist for your business. They will go out and tell other people about what you do and how you serve and bring clients your way. So we need to make sure these people are equipped with proper introductions is in a way that people can understand what you do. So I found myself, for example, I'm an epidemiologist by trade, and I removed the word epidemiology from my introduction because that's an assumption that other people understand what epidemiology is. And I wanted to remove that and not make that assumption. So anyway, let's go through a few examples here. I think this is so important. I We also have a mastermind program, publichealthentrepreneurs.com is our website. And along with this podcast, we have a mastermind, a small group mastermind program where entrepreneurs are able to come together and benefit from masterminding, ask you know, some guided questions, answer community, all that. But one of the things we do in this program on a regular basis is practice our elevator pitch in a number of different scenarios because it's so it's that important. And sometimes you can type it out or write it or memorize something, but it doesn't matter until you start to speak it and have conversation. And if you don't have enough practice, you'll never know really how that sounds. You don't want to be testing it out at the conference or in those situations. So this is something that if you're interested in a program like that, make sure that you go to publichealthentrepreneurs.com and just click on mastermind. And all the details of that mastermind program is there. If you read through that and it looks interesting to you, then we invite you to apply. We can get together and share more about it with you. But it's, it's that important that we get really comfortable and we are able to explain and articulate what we do. Again, there's no, I don't think there's a point where you just reach it and you get it like just perfect and it's good and you're done. It may get to an optimal point, but Nate, things change and don't just don't get comfortable with this part. Always exercise, always practice, always take advantage of any opportunity to, to share your elevator pitch, which is that shortened introduction of what you do, who you serve. So I think at the very basic level, if I were to share with you anything about this elevator pitch, developing your elevator pitch at the very basic level, I would encourage you to make sure that whatever your shortened introduction is, whatever your elevator pitch is, it should include what you do, like the problem that you're solving through your business and who you serve, who you do it for. So if you are a grant writer, I just finished talking with my friend who has a grant writing business. So that's top of mind right now. But if your, your business is grant writing and you write grants and you're probably niched in some way, some people focus on federal grants, some people focus on state level grants. So let's say you focus on federal grants. So maybe your, your pitch is, I support, I'm a grant writer. I help Nonprofit organizations receive funding through federal sources or federal opportunities or something along those lines, right? You're going to say what you do, you're a grant writer, or I'm a grant writer for nonprofit organizations could be your elevator pitch. (laughs) So nonprofit organizations are commonly needing grant writing. So if nothing else, that person that you introduce yourself to walks away knowing that I just met someone who is a grant writer for nonprofit organizations. So then they're going to go and maybe a couple of weeks later, they'll bump into a colleague who is a executive director at a nonprofit organization. I'll say, well, you know, I just met this person. Like how many times does that happen to you? You meet someone, you're in a conversation and somebody that you just remember is top of mind. They pop in your mind because you remember clearly what they do or how they can solve that problem. Or someone saying, I really, you know, I need to get our upstairs bedrooms painted and I just don't have the time to do it. And you'll think, oh, well, I know a painter. I know someone who does that, right? You want to be that person. You want to be able to pop in people's minds when the conversation surfaces and it speaks to what you do and who you serve. So make sure at the very least you're introducing yourself with what you do through your company. What is your business? If it's something like a commonly recognized genre, like grant writing, then lead with that. If it's something like epidemiology, you may want to come up with a way to explain that that is makes it more common and, and relatable. Okay. All right. I've gone on a lot in the weeds and a lot of the details here, but I think that is important at the very least for you to prioritize this activity. So those are the minimum who you, you know, the problem you solve, what you do and who you serve, your ideal client should be included in that shortened introduction or elevator pitch. Another thing is to, I mean, it's nice if you know your audience, right? But sometimes you have no idea who you're speaking to. You don't know if it's your ideal client or someone who's not going to be interested or something in between, somewhere in between. So you really don't know that. So you have to really just stay clear on 
what you do, who you serve, where you are, and don't try to mix that up to fit the person. Just be clear on who you are and lead with that. A couple things is make sure it's concise. You don't have to put everything in that introduction. And we serve, we do this and we do that and we have all these products and we, you don't have to do all of that. You just stick to the problem that you solve or you know your value proposition and who you serve. And then let the follow-up questions give you the opportunity to go into more and to explain more. That's where the conversation gets generated. So the purpose of the elevator pitch is to give that quick introduction. And then you're going to know if they're interested or not based on their follow-up questions. And if they don't ask you any follow-up, it's okay, right? But sometimes that just is the opening to the conversation and you can go back and forth with details. So keep it concise. If you can start with a hook, that's really creative or clever. If you have sometimes what you do can be equated to a movie or something popular or something trending. If you can do that, that's great. I don't really have that going for me right now in terms of how I introduce my business, but sometimes that works for people. So that can be something, depending on what you're doing, if you can find a way to just make it engaging or intriguing or lead with a something. You ever see that movie, blah, blah, blah. Movies are tricky because people, you know, like me who don't go to the movies a lot could be hit or miss, but it needs to be something really mainstream or really obvious and very likely to be top of mind for someone if you're going to lead with a hook or story, something along those lines. I think that telling a story, which doesn't have to be a long story, it can be very short. Remember, this is very short. It gives an opportunity to be memorable and to be relatable and, you know, it can be referred. So think about some creative ways to have fun with that. Jot down a few things. And this next tip is probably the one I'll probably sit, sit on for a while. In fact, we may have a part two into how we can practice this. But my tip for you, my final one is to really practice, practice, practice. Don't just write it down and say, okay, I've got that somewhere or look to read it. You may read it when you're just kind of getting started on that, but you really need to say it out loud a lot, talk in the mirror. That's why we have that as such a priority in my mastermind group program. And those that if you're in that program and you're listening to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but you've also likely already benefited from all that practice as well. So I think practice, 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 talk in the mirror, record yourself, video, record yourself, audio only if that's all that you have access to, but everyone probably has at least the mobile phone and you can record that video. Record yourself and pretend that you are introducing yourself and create a scenario and practice, practice, practice. That is the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway. So just to kind of wrap up, because I think there will be a part two to this and we'll probably revisit this over and over, but make sure that how you introduce yourself is concise and keep it simple. And you want to make sure that you're including what you do and who you serve. So that value proposition, what you do, meaning the problem that you're solving and who you serve, you know, that beneficiary there, your client, your ideal client, that needs to be included. It needs to be concise, simple, clear, and then practice, 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 and practice some more. (laughs) All right. Now, as we begin to wrap up, please remember that if you're interested in learning more about the group program that I've described, our mastermind program from our website, which is publichealthentrepreneurs.com, just click on mastermind and all of the details are there. If you're interested, we encourage you to apply and then we can, our team and I will follow up and share even more details. We want to make sure it's a really good fit, not only for you in our program, but mutually for you and for us as well. Okay. We also ask you to help us share about this podcast. You can do that by sharing our website, publichealthentrepreneurs.com and let people discover the podcast that way. And if you're listening in one of the podcast apps, you can use one of the sharing buttons there, or you can write a favorable review in Apple Podcasts, which would absolutely make my day. (laughs) But also it helps other people to decide that this is worth tuning in and listening to. It's one of the one of the fastest growing, easiest ways for h- helping this show to grow. But whichever option you choose, I just appreciate you helping us share the word about this podcast. So I appreciate you and I thank you in advance. All right, everyone. Until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more.